Hello everyone. Uh, in today's video, <laughs> as you can clearly see, uh, we'll be uh, doing a little project. Uh, build something really quick here. Uh, uh, what we're going to be building uh, is simply a uh, headphone amplifier dummy load. So it's basically just a box with a bunch of resistors, some connectors, and some switch in a switch. Okay, <laughs> it's pretty simple stuff, but uh, I just wanted to uh, share this with you. And the reason we are going to be building that is that the headphone amplifier PCBs are here. Okay, so I'll be building this in a uh, future episode, and we'll be uh, testing it out. And before we do that. We need to first build this so that we can uh, properly test it when it's done, okay, and characterize it and do all sorts of uh, cool stuff with it. And for that, I went to my local uh, electronics store, got some uh, power resistors, as you can see. This is just a, a general assortment of uh, resistors that uh, are close enough to uh, common uh, headphone impedances. So we've got some uh, 5 watt. Uh, 15 ohms, some 5 watt 32 ohms for those uh, 30 ohm, 32 ohm, 30 ohm uh, amplifiers. We've got some uh, 100 ohms because there are some uh, weird amplifiers out there that are <laughs> um, uh, not amplifiers, some headphones are like 120 ohms, some stuff like that. Uh, we've also got some uh, 220, uh, 330 for my uh, to <laughs> simulate my Sennheiser. So it uh, simulates a 300 ohm load, more or less, and some uh, 560 for those uh, 600 ohm impedance headphones. Okay, now we've also got a knob, a rotary switch. In this case, it's a uh, uh, two pole, six throw switch. Okay, so this is going to be selecting uh, the uh, different uh, resistors. No. The idea here is that uh, we can load both channels at the same time. Uh, we've also got some uh, RCA jacks for the uh, inputs and hey, some BNCs. So this is what's going to go to the oscilloscope and to the uh, uh, distortion analyzer for us to characterize the headphone amplifier. And so, yeah, I'm also going to be uh, uh, putting some stuff. I forgot uh, uh, there, but I forgot uh, there will also be some switches so that I can uh, disconnect the load to measure crosstalk between the channels. Now, yeah, so uh, this is going to be a, a very interesting, a very simple project that anyone can build, and it's extremely useful if you are dealing with uh, uh, audio circuits and uh, want to test them out. Instead of just having to uh, plug res random resistors in the output and precariously and stuff like that, you have something that's shielded. So the noise figures, if you want to characterize your headphone amplifier, and it's uh, pretty important to do that in case of crosstalk and noise, because it's a lot more noticeable when you're using headphones. And uh, uh, if you have like dangling leads in open air, it's just going to be horrible. You're not going to be getting a, uh, uh, a good figure in a, a true figure in that case. So in this case, I just got some of those uh, cheap enclosures from eBay. So uh, with that, it's going to be all shielded. So we are not picking up any uh, outside noise. We're, that way we are actually measuring the performance of the amplifier. So uh, let me uh, rearrange the bench. Let me uh, uh, talk a little bit about uh, how we're going to wire this up. Then I'm going to uh, start doing some <laughs> metal work and actually drilling all the holes and making just getting everything ready to uh, uh, receive the the whole thing inside. Okay, so see you in a bit. Before we begin with the project, let's talk about uh, rotary switches. Uh, this is going to be the heart of the whole project. This is going to be switching all the resistances. So uh, it's pretty important and it's something that causes a lot of confusion among people. Um, I, first of all, will uh, uh, assume that you understand the terms like uh, um, poles and throws of a switch. If you don't, hey, just uh, Google it. It's pretty simple stuff to understand. So uh, this is not the uh, uh, data sheet for this rotary switch. I just got this one from the electronics store and I have no clue which brand or whatever it is. I just know that it is a two pole 
two, th six throw, a uh, single wafer switch, or do you switch? That matches up with uh, this thing that I found on the internet. Uh, the first thing before we begin with this project, you need to determine the number of resistances that you are going to be uh, uh, switching in. In this case, I chose six just because this was the only switch available on the store. So <laughs> go figure. Then I had to pick uh, six resistances. Uh, I think uh, four is more than enough so that you can cover the uh, 16 ohm, uh, 32 ohms, 300 ohms, and 600 ohm headphones. So you don't need uh, six. Uh, and uh, that's that's just my opinion. Uh, hey, if you want, if you're just going to be dealing with uh, low impedance headphones, or you just want, for example, the 30 ohm and the 300 ohm impedances, hey, just grab a switch like this, a, a single pole double throw. Now, you can just switch between, for example, a low impedance headphone and a high impedance headphone, hey. <laughs> and you already have your dummy load right there. I just wanted to go a bit fancier, <laughs> but uh, that's just me, okay? Um, so, the heart of it is this. So you have uh, basically two sets of uh, uh, six positions. And there are two kinds that you can get. You can get uh, this kind, which is a double, throw, throw, uh, double pole six throw with a single wafer. So it has uh, 12 uh, connections plus the uh, two commons. And you can also get, for example, a double ganked or a double wafer um, switch, which is basically two single pole uh, six throws switches just uh, with a, a common shaft. And uh, those will have uh, two sets of uh, wafers like this, and they'll have just six positions, um, but two commons so that you can uh, switch between them. And they just switch in parallel and they have a six positions here in the rotary switch. In this case, since this is the cheaper kind, uh, you have a 12 positions that you can put this in. Because what happens is, let's first just uh, take a look at this. So this is what's going to be inside of here. These are the uh, connections that you see. Now, what happens is, let's say it's on the, uh, on the uh, uh, leftmost side like this and what it's going to be doing is you have your common here from for one side and the common here for the other side and there will just be a, a couple of fingers that are going to be connecting this to here and this to here okay pretty simple now when you advance one position to the left to the right like this what it's going to do is it will uh, disconnect this and it will connect it like this. So these two now are going to be connected like that. And if you advance it again and again, and it's just going to keep doing that. But what happens is when it reaches this point, let me just switch here. So uh, let's say that these fingers are red. Okay, so the ones that start with A, uh, the A common connection are going to be red, and the ones that start with the C common connection, are going to be blue. So when it gets around here, you have a connection like this. Okay, right? So this is connected here, and this is connected here, like this. Now, as soon as you advance, because remember, this has uh, 12 positions that you can uh, uh, turn this in. So this blue finger right here, it's going to jump to the A common connection, it's going to, and it's going to appear here. And this red finger right here is going to jump to the C common uh, um, position, and it will appear right here. So you have this, okay? So they're, they, they're still isolated because uh, they are just like uh, fingers that are going to be rotating like this, but it's going to be uh, starting up Right here, so what will happen is you have a sort of symmetrical uh, arrangement. So let's say you put uh, one resistor here. Let's say this is R1 for the left or the right side, and this is going to be the R1 for the other side. And uh, R2 here, R2, and R2. 
okay? So what will happen is, when it's in the uh, uh, normal position, like this, so you have R1, R1, and then it's going to go around, and then it's just going to restart at R1. So as soon as you hit, hit the middle of this rotary switch, and you advanced another uh, uh, position, it's just going to begin all over again. So uh, uh, it's, uh, <laughs> it's something that you got to keep in mind, okay? So you need to make sure that these are symmetrical, first of all, because uh, you want them to have the same uh, resistance for left and right channels. But also you got to keep in mind that as soon as you advance past that uh, middle position of the switch, it's just going to restart. It's not going to uh, uh, start decreasing, it's actually going to restart from your, let's say, your lowest resistance point. Okay, if you had a uh, two ganged uh, uh, single pole uh, six throw resistors, so uh, uh, rotary switches like the ones that have uh, two wafers, you wouldn't have to uh, uh, care about this because it would only have uh, six rotary positions and it would uh, uh, just always uh, uh, stop at one end and you can just go back if you want to uh, lower the resistance. This usually isn't a problem, the only thing that you gotta keep in mind is that if you go past, for example, if you are uh, here in the 600 ohm uh, impedance and you have a very large signal that you are testing, if you advance it to the next position it's going to put a, a 15 ohm load onto that output and it could uh, cause problems depending on the way that you've uh, designed your headphone amplifier. So it's just kind of like the way that you have to keep in mind when you're using a, uh, one of those uh, cheap um, uh, multimeters with the uh, voltage and current uh, uh, milliamp uh, ranges that are the milliamp jacks that are combined and that you don't switch into the uh, amp setting so that you're going to <laughs> uh, short out the Thing that you're measuring it's the same thing here you just got to keep this in mind okay so now that we've uh, uh, seen this let's uh jump on over to uh actually building this amplifier okay, just another tangent before we actually start building the project i uh, really i forget about uh talking about this uh before i start doing anything i just want to show you the schematic that uh, i didn't think this needs a schematic but hey uh, just so that uh, you guys can understand this. Uh, this is the schematic of what's going to be uh, uh, built. Uh, this is only one channel, so you have here your RCA uh, jack here. Uh, you also have a BNC that's just going to be like right here, and it's going to be in parallel with this. That first goes into this switch right here. So a single pole, double throw. This is going to be the switch that will uh, disable the uh, load so that you can uh, uh, measure crosstalk between the channels. So usually if you were to uh, wire up something like this on instinct, you would uh, connect your uh, signal input here to the common terminal and uh, one of the other terminals would be going to the rotary switch with the resistances and uh, the other you would just left floating so that uh, you can switch and left the, this input floating or being loaded by these uh, resistances. And uh, here you can see that I didn't do that. What I did was a bit different and there is a, a reason for that. So the common is actually going into the resistor network and one of the inputs is going to the input of, the, uh, um, of your signal and the other is going to ground. The reason for that is if you look at it like this, uh, with this going to the uh, uh, rotary switch, one going to ground and one's going to be the signal, what I can do is I can use a coax here, so let's draw here, a coax cable, and I can tie this to ground so that I'm grounded on this side and on this side. So I can put the input signal in here, this goes to the rotary switch, and then the ground of the shielded cable just ties into here. That way my signal is completely grounded the whole way because this is a, a rather uh, long case as you can see. So one terminal right here, the other right here, and the switch right around here. There is a, quite a lot of way that uh, would be uh, uh, having, if you, I just put a, a regular cable here, 
uh, that would be a lot of unshielded, even though this is a shielded case. But hey, that would be a lot of a, a, an unshielded run of cable, and that's not good. I want to make sure that this is uh, not contributing any noise whatsoever to the measured uh, signal. So by running a shielded cable, I made sure of that, because then the loop from here to here is very small. And I don't have to carry that much about noise in there. So by doing it in this uh, non-orthodox way, hey, I can get quite a lot of shielding in the signal and still have that uh, uh, possibility of uh, switching in and out the uh, load. And since this isn't coming right here, when I switch it out, the only thing that it's going to do, it's going to uh, put these resistors between the grounds. And there's nothing wrong in there. So yeah, that's going to be the topology. So I just have to duplicate this for one side and the other. Yeah. So now it's uh, basically just a whole bunch of uh, drilling, point-to-point -point wiring, and yeah, and we'll have a finished product. So let me start building this up. I'll probably start by uh, drilling this pan these panels, and uh, maybe if I need to drill something right here for the rounding, hey, okay, we'll see that. So uh, I'll see you in a bit. So I finished drilling all the holes for the front panels. So here they are. This is the back panel. So it's going to look a bit like this. So we'll have uh, the DNCs up here that will go to the uh, oscilloscope or any sort of measuring instrument like the uh, distortion analyzer. And in the bottom, we'll have the um, RCA jacks for the inputs. And on the front, it will just be a the selector switch here and the toggle switches to toggle between a uh, load or no load on the on inputs. Okay, so this is how it's going to look. But before I move on, uh, I want to talk a bit about the grounding because we want this case to be completely shielded. We want this case to shield its uh, internals uh, so that we don't pick up any noise. And these uh, cheap cases and closures from China, they, they have uh, one big issue. They're all anodized, but they are fully anodized. So, as you can see in here, this part is also anodized. Uh, they, when it, this is in the, uh, this is in the uh, uh, manufacturing plant. They just make a, a very big um, extrusion, an aluminum extrusion. And then they cut them to size and apparently they just anodize them uh, like this. Uh, if you get something, for example, from uh, Hammond, uh, I, no, I don't have it here, but in the um, uh, high voltage power supply uh, overview video, uh, I've talked about uh, a Hammond case that's just like this one. And they are actually, uh, the, the whole uh, extrusion is anodized before it is cut to size. So then when it's cut to size, this face right here is actually exposed aluminum so that you can, uh, for example, put a front panel right here that is also of metal and it will make good contact and uh, ground everything. But in this case, since this is just Chinese crap, uh, it's anodized here as well. So that's not good because when we put the panels here, this is not going to be grounded, okay? So, uh, first thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to just uh, take this to the belt center and just uh, send it a little bit. I don't even think I, ha I have to uh, go to the belt center, just some uh, uh, mild uh, wet and dry paper. Maybe it's going to take this off and expose some raw aluminum. Uh, same here, okay? So this is the front side, this is the back side. This is completely anodized, okay? So I will, uh, uh, sand a little bit here on these uh, sides so that they are um, uh, at raw aluminum so that it makes good content at and can ground this pretty well so this case is entirely grounded not just that but just just in case uh, this is already exposed aluminum down here so uh, whenever we put for example a, a B and C like this it will make some contact with that aluminum but it's not the best loom because hey, it's not best contact. It's just a uh, very, it's not loose in there, but it's uh, not tight. So it's not making a direct contact with that aluminum. So I'm also going to uh, send this a bit 
in a circle so that uh, when we put when we tighten this nut around this hole it makes good contact and we've got a, a very solid ground there okay so uh, whenever you are dealing with a uh, cases like this from China, hey, it's always very important to care about grounding, be it on a headphone amplifier or especially, for example, especially on a headphone amplifier, but if you're also building, for example, a power amplifier or something like that, hey, it's very important to have a good shielded case. And in that case, you, you got to send this uh, face right here and you got to send some of this uh, um, contact points. So, for example, your inputs and all that, you better send that hole so that uh, it makes good contact with the connector and that you can ground the whole case and make the, the, your product or your project uh, very well shielded. Okay, so I'm going to do that right now and uh, I'll see you in a bit. Well, so I was just about to show you something and then I realized <laughs> that uh, I filmed the whole segment with absolutely no audio because I forgot to turn on my microphone. So, <laughs> yay, great. So let me just show you this. So uh, I've already uh, uh, prepared uh, this, the back panel. So we already have the connectors in here. Now what I wanted to show you was uh, this. I've uh, uh, sanded these uh, surfaces. So this is what I'm going to show you right now. But uh, as you can see, I've sanded it here. And I've also sanded uh, this uh, part of the panels, the, the top and bottom panels. So uh, it's already in a, <laughs> it does make a very good contact. I've used a, a pretty uh, uh, coarse sandpaper. So uh, the surface is a bit rough, but that's exactly what you want. Because uh, that means that uh, it's going to make a very good contact. Now, yeah, so what I wanted to show first of all, yeah, this is the, uh, um, the back panel and the, I've uh, joined the grounds, as you can see here. Of course, uh, the, all these grounds are common because uh, of the, this surface, but uh, I also just want to make sure that these grounds are uh, uh, really nicely tied together. But uh, when I was going to uh, 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 prepare here the uh, front panel, I was pushing this, uh, this knob here on the uh, shaft of the rotary encoder, the, the rotary encoder, not rotary encoder, the rotary switch, and well, this happened. So it just fell apart. Uh, I've also got one ball bearing in here, and there's another one that's trapped in there. So yeah, a bit of a setback, but uh, yeah, this this will clip back together, no problems. Okay, so uh, not 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 that much of a problem, but. Uh, one thing that's good about this is that at least we can see inside of it. So let me just uh, zoom right in and uh, let's just talk about this. Let's make at least something good about this whole fiasco. Here we go. So this is how it is inside of the rotary switch. So as you can see, you've got the uh, contacts there that match up with these. You've got the uh, common strips there and then you've got the uh, little fingers that make contact between it so works kind of like this I don't know if you can see inside of there but uh, yeah it's making it's making contact yeah that's it so uh, now I'm going to reassemble this <laughs> and uh, try not to use so much force let's see you in a bit Thank you. 
So now the uh, front and back panels are done. So this is the uh, final result. So as you can see, the uh, rotary switch is working. Here it is, the two switches as well. This side looks on the back side. So uh, now it's just a matter of uh, uh, putting this all in, and, uh, <laughs> um, determining the locations of the resistors, and yeah, it's basically done. This is the back panel. This is going to look a bit like this. Let me just do a little mock-up here. So yeah, this is how it's going to uh, look like. And uh, there we go. So then the resistors are just going to go like uh, one from the, uh, the right side and one for the left side. So yeah, there it is. As you can see, there is a lot of a. Uh, th there will be a lot of empty space, but. Uh, Again, that's why I've uh, sanded this all down and made sure that uh, this is all shielded. So yeah, uh, now I'm just going to uh, wire this all up and yeah, see you in a bit. So after a lot of work, <laughs> as you can see, it's uh, it's finally finished. Uh, haven't put the uh, top enclosure on yet because uh, I want to do some uh, uh, very quick experiment just to see how well shielded these this case is. And if we did a, a good job with uh, the whole sanding stuff. Um, so yeah, this is the final result. As you can see, we have the left and the right channel going into the, uh, the, the uh, active switches. And the uh, rotary switch, which is just the symmetrical, so that uh, we have both the uh, right side resistors and the left side resistors here. Now, let's uh, go in for a closer look. This is what I, I've done. It's uh, very simple, as you can see, it's symmetrical. All the resistors have been placed and soldered, painstakingly soldered. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so these are the switches that um, engage or disengage the, uh, the load. So you can make one channel go floating, that way you can measure crosstalk. So you can load one channel so that a lot of currents passing through it, and then you unload another, and then just uh, measure uh, if you can see the signal that's on the other channel on this one. Then you can calculate your uh, isolation between the channels. As you can see, I tried to keep the uh, wiring to a minimum, but hey, uh, <laughs> the case is very is very big. So I've used the uh, uh, RJ58 uh, coax. For the inputs, it's a little dark, so it's a bit difficult to see, but uh, there, there you see. And yeah, so uh, it's very simple. Again, it's just a box with a, a bunch of resistors, but uh, <laughs> that's, a, that's a, a thing that uh, you, you would need to do if you really want to uh, build these circuits like in, in any sort of... Um, regularity as I do because I really want to I, I always love to experiment with different stuff so you need something like this a, a proper uh, resistor box <laughs> so that you can load your amplifiers and actually test them as just placing resistors in the output of your uh, circuits uh, gets tired it gets tired, like very very fast and not just that but uh, you just have a lot of straight straight leads when you do that and then you're just measuring uh, also the noise that's increased something that won't happen if you actually put a pair of headphones now yeah overall uh, this is a much better solution here it's all fancy and stuff hey again you can just do this with a uh, once uh, two switches one from left one for right if you want a high and low and then just one of those uh, three position switch so that you have on off and on so that you can uh, it's always very important to have a position where it's completely unloaded, okay? So yeah, <laughs> that is it. It's very simple. So now that this is all uh, uh, done, I will um, uh, change the camera angles. I will uh, fire up the uh, uh, GoPro so that we can do some measurements just to uh, see if the resistors here are actually... Uh, <laughs> correct and I've put them all in the correct places uh, and also then I'm going to fire up the oscilloscope 
and uh, measure here um, how much noise this is adding to the system and if the shielding is going to uh, uh, um, curb all that noise okay so uh, see you in a bit so uh, here we go uh, this multimeter the fluke is going to be measuring the left side and the uh, uh, 121GW is going to be uh, measuring the resistance on the right side. Right now I've got the um, active switches uh, switched off so both inputs should be floating and they are. Now let's uh, uh, engage. I also have this in the its lowest setting so we, we should see the 15 ohm resistor. So let me engage the uh, left channel first. And the fluke is on a, its high res mode, so that's why it's a bit slow. There it is. So 16, so that's that's good because it's measuring basically what would be a, a 16 ohm uh, headphone. So uh, that resistor is very <laughs> good in its uh, out of spec bounds. Now for the right channel. There we go. So same thing. So they are dropping in value because these uh, <laughs> multimeters, they are applying some current through them and they're heating up. So uh, I can uh, change the resistance just by uh, touching them. Uh, yeah, this is weird. It really jumped up. Why is that? Oh, I've got a bad connection somewhere. So let me just check this. Yep, it was a bad connection. This is not. Okay, so on. okay, there we go. So now I've got a good connection. So yeah, they're basically both. Uh, very well within spec and very uh, close to each other. That's very good. So now let's move on to the uh, 33 ohm resistor. It's measuring uh, 34 again, uh, very close to each other. That's really good. So they are tracking very well so that you don't have an imbalance. For example, if this resistor is very way off, uh, all these resistors, most of them are uh, 1%. Uh, I only think one of them. The uh, 220 ohm is a, a 5% resistor, but I uh, and I didn't even match them. I just uh, got them out of the packet and just stuck them in here. Uh, I really wasn't thinking there. I should have matched them before, but hey, I'm getting a, quite a good match, so that's great. Now let's go for the 100 ohm. Uh, here's a, a, a thing. So yeah, here. One is a, a bit different than the other, but hey, this is not a, a, a big deal, okay? If, if this was, like, for example, uh, 100.5, and this is 100, then we'd have a, a little bit of an imbalance, but again, very small imbalance. And when you get a dynamic load, like a, um, a headphone, which is a capacitive and inductive, <laughs> these stuff this doesn't matter, because there will always be an imbalance between the channels, but... For measuring, it's good to have them well balanced, and in this case, they are. So the 220, the same thing, 220, pretty well matched. All right. Now for the 330, again, same story there. Pretty good. Now for the 600 ohm. Oh, nice. It's a, it's a wide. It's quite a within spec. We only have like one ohm of difference, so that's good. So all the resistors are working. Now if I just advance another position, because I've went to six positions here, if I advance another, it's going to go back down to the 15 ohm. And there it is, it's back down to 15 ohm. And yeah, and I can just go add it until we reach 600 ohm, and then I just can't go, and I just have to wind it all back down, okay? So there it is. In terms of a uh, of a uh, resistance, this is all working. Okay, so uh, I can uh, switch one channel off, and I can switch it on. Same thing with the other one. Here it is, and I can uh, move this freely, as you can see, from one end to the other, and yeah, it's all working. All right, great. So now, uh, let me uh, arrange this. I'm going to fire up the oscilloscope, then we're going to do some noise measurements, then put a lid on this and just to organize this whole mess that I've left my uh, workbench at. Hey, when you're doing a project, it's always a mess on the workbench and then you uh, waste a, a ton of time trying to clean it up. So yeah, that's great.
So a very successful project so far. Now let's uh, check the noise measurements, just see if we did a good job on the ground inside the things. So, everything is uh, set up. We've got the uh, oscilloscope uh, measuring an open cable, an open coax, and uh, just so that we can get a, 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 a good reading of the uh, background noise. So we're getting around uh, 960, almost one millivolt of uh, background noise with the cable just uh, non-terminated, just completely free. Now let's uh, connect it up. To this I'm going to connect it to the right channel there's just no difference there but uh, so as soon as I connect it uh, this is engaged so as you can see uh, we start getting uh, a little bit of a, a spiking noise that's just because uh, we've added a, a bit of a loop here but it's uh, well terminated in this case into a 15 ohm so uh, it's not a very significant spike and as you can see, if I move this around, we get to basically nothing. Now, uh, let's leave this here in the 15 ohms, and it's a spike in a bit, but uh, let's say around a 2 millivolts. So let me uh, put this case around it, and let's see how this changes. As soon as I put the case in, it drops down to 560 microvolts. Sometimes goes through a little spike as you can see but it never goes uh, beyond that open cable okay it's it's always uh, below that uh, open cable noise so that means that we have improved the uh, performance just by putting in this it, 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 the cable and <laughs> just putting it in this case and uh, closing it up like this so yeah that's that's great now let me uh, remove this you can see it uh, spikes up again now one of the most important things, uh, when, especially when you, uh, you're going to be measuring stuff like crosstalk, is to make sure that uh, even though one side is loaded and the other isn't, is that there isn't any noise on your system. Okay, that's very important because then you're going to be measuring the crosstalk plus noise. And uh, that, so that's not a good thing. So let me uh, switch this off. Now uh, we get a huge spike on our noise. That's because this is unterminated, so this is open circuit. So it's just grabbing a lot of uh, stray <laughs> noise, just because we have a, a lot of uh, wire here. So there it is, so it's at uh, around like uh, almost 3 millivolts of noise. Now, let's put the case in, and let's see, this is the real, <laughs> uh, uh, the real test. If we get a good measurement when it is open circuit, then we are golden, okay? So let me put this case in. And as you can see, as soon as I put the case in, the noise goes back down to the way it was before, even better than when it was just the uh, coax just sitting here laying on the bench. And if I just press it on a bit, let's see if that changes. Yep, it improves. Because that way you're making a, a very good contact with the uh, top of the case. And yeah, it improves and it never spikes to that uh, 960 millivolts that we were seeing before. So uh, that's great, <laughs> yeah. We have a, a pretty good uh, uh, bit of test equipment here. And, uh, I'm sure it's going to be used a lot. And yeah, hey, this, uh, this was a, a great learning experience. I, I hope so. Uh, we learned a bit about uh, noise reduction, which is something that you always got to keep in mind. Uh, you've learned a bit about uh, how to fabricate something simple as this and uh, all the thought process that it goes into something as simple as this and uh, yeah i'm pretty glad with the uh, final result i hope you've enjoyed this now you can literally uh, build it any way you want if you want to you can just grab a, a very big uh, rotary switch and just have all sorts of uh, things in here you could have a whole load of uh, resistances that you could test and, uh, yeah or you could be as just as simple as a switch okay and uh, yeah, so that's it. It's uh, It was very nice to do this. And uh, I hope you've enjoyed this. And uh, with this, hey, we are ready to uh, uh, start uh, assembling the headphone amplifier. Uh, yeah, when I finish this, then I'm going to uh, build an enclosure for it. I still don't know if I'm going to do a video uh, with the amplifier uh, before building the enclosure 
for it because I think it's a lot nicer when it's on an enclosure and we can get some uh, uh, final measurements, especially stuff like crosstalk and noise. When you put it in an enclosure and close it up, as you can clearly see by uh, this thing, uh, you get uh, some better figures. So uh, I'm still debating what to do there. So uh, if I go to the whole uh, uh, enclosure thing and all, uh, it's going to, uh, you have to wait a while for the thing to be uh, completed and for a video to be released. So uh, hey, let's see. But yeah, hey, expect this in the near future, okay? There'll be a, a lot of great videos there. Uh, I've also got a little uh, uh, filter and fuse, uh, PCB made. So yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be very nice. Uh, maybe some videos in, uh, on uh, metal bending, um, sheet metal bending and stuff like that, because uh, the enclosure is going to be uh, made out of uh, bent sheet metal and uh, all painted up. It's going to look pretty nice in the end. So yeah, uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you've learned something about it with this. Now, by the way, you can do this for anything. If you want to do this for a uh, big amplifier stuff, for example, like a four or eight, 16 ohm lows, just keep in mind that you can't use a rotary encoder in that case <laughs> because uh, you're going to be passing a lot of current and uh, then the uh, contact resistance here is going to become a problem. So, hey, uh, you can scale this up to whatever you want, all right? So yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this one. I'm going to uh, clean up the bench. I'm going to uh, uh, screw in the uh, top of the case. And uh, Mark, this is done. Okay, so uh, thanks very much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this one. Uh, if you've got any suggestions, any feedback, please leave them in the comments below. Uh, and yeah, see you in the next video. And hopefully a video about a headphone amplifier. Okay, so uh, bye.